hello students hope you all are fine today we are going to discuss one more uh, category of drug uh, from the drug useful in the diabetes okay and that is amp or you can say it uh, kinase activators okay so that is definitely nothing else but your biguanide drug okay so biguanide class of the drug includes metformin fenformin and bufor out of these drugs this drug that is your metformin is the very important drug right which is right now uh, is as i indicated as a first choice of medicine by american diabetic association right for treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus fenformin yes was introduced somewhere in the 1950s but because of the toxicities that is we will discuss later on here in the same video that it is associated with the lactic acidosis and this is the reason why fenformin was banned in the major countries in 1977 now there is very interesting fact that you would like to know about this drug is uh, just because of that uh, the drug was as i told you that was banned in 1977 it took almost 25 years for indian regulators to you know ban this drug right so fenformin in india was banned somewhere in 2003 right but then fortunately it is now banned so there is not an issue now uh, buformin also is having same problem of lactic acidosis but uh, then still it is a legal option in many countries but most of the developed countries buformin is not available as a like said uh, therapeutic option right so in that case we will focus our discussion majorly toward metformin metformin okay so metformin or you said biguanate the drugs from the biguanate class the advantage major advantage is they do not cause hyperglycemia okay that does mean that these are anti hyperglycemic agents right what is the difference between this two you know said terminology if a drug is hypoglycemic that means it can reduce the blood sugar level even you know said below the basal value right basal value we normally consider 120 mg per dl of the basal sugar level in the blood that is considered as a basal value right so if patient is having hyperglycemia when you give a drug like maybe say for example sulfonylurea it can reduce even beyond this level right it could reduce the blood sugar level maybe even below 120 mg per dl but drug like metformin right uh, 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 even if there is an overdose then also they will not be able to do so and that is the reason why i told you that it is anti hyperglycemic agent fine so that is an advantage and this is the reason why metformin can safely be combined with other drugs which are having tendency to produce hypoglycemia say for example sulfonylureas very important drug right very therapeutic therapeutically very important similarly maybe we will learn glp1 analogs or maybe some of the other drugs or even insulin itself right the problem of like a combination therapy is additive hypoglycemia can lead to serious complications while in this case metformin definitely because it is not having tendency to produce hypoglycemia it will not be able to do so okay so now let's check the mechanism of action mechanism as i told you that this drug are basically activators of amp activated protein kinase okay and in that case they have a very important pharmacological action and most important out of all pharmacological action is reduction of hepatic glucose production now this is a major issue in case of type 2 diabetes right and that is the reason why even say for example after fasting because sorry after eating some food definitely the blood sugar level may rise in case of type 2 diabetic patient but then you should think that why even if say for example patient is not taking carbohydrate still you can say that uh, his blood sugar level are been raising or maybe even in fasting condition why there is an hyperglycemia that should be of that is observed which is ideally it should not be the reason is there is you can say that uh, uh, pathway right that is in the liver which can lead to gluconeogenesis okay i hope you are clear with this terminology gluco refers to glucose neo refers to new and genesis means production right when glucose is produced from the sources other than glycogen like say for example lipids or maybe say for example amino acids or maybe say for example lactic acid such a case that is called as a gluconeogenesis 
that pathway is here is been uh, uh, inhibited by your drug that is metformin right so let us check right that how does they reduces the hepatic glucose production right so as i told you that these are amp activated protein kinase activators right so once amp activated protein kinase gets activated it inhibits the expression of nuclear receptor right so this nuclear receptors serves as an important uh, 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 molecular mechanism where the gene switch right is inhibited right so expression of genes right is definitely is dependent on some of the transcription factors these factors are not produced by the you can say that uh, nuclear receptor right such a case wherever these enzymes which are required for an important you can say biochemical mechanism that is gluconeogenesis are stopped right as i told you that it inhibits the expression of genes so once genes get uh, yeah, inhibited then in that case enzyme production for this gluconeogenesis also will be less and thus you can say that gluconeogenesis can be inhibited right meaning of this word gluconeogenesis we have already learned right? so i'm not repeating this right so this is a very important mechanism apart from this you can say that there are other mechanisms also which are possible that is increase in the utilization of glucose right you know that there are uh, uh, three major centers right where the utilization of glucose is very important and uh, is you can say that uh, dependent on the insulin right where you can observe insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes patients and out of that skeletal muscle and adipose tissue are most important right so you can just see that increase in the glucose uptake and utilization in the skeletal muscle this also is through the activation of ampk pathway only fine but then it is equally important right more important definitely uh, your reduction of hepatic glucose production and second step is definitely increase in the peripheral utilization of glucose now an added advantage that you can get with the metformin therapy is that does increase oxidation of free fatty acid that is triglyceride as you all know that triglycerides are very important in the pathogenesis of uh, you say atherosclerosis as well as many cardiovascular complication this definitely is uh, clinically very important not even fatty acid but still uh, 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 sir, additionally it is also your ldl and vldl that also will get reduced right so reduction in the synthesis of ldl vldl and triglyceride this also will help a lot as you know that most of the patients of type 2 diabetes they are obese such a case syndrome x is always a possible case in clinical scenarios right that is a uh, patient is also having diabetes hypertension obesity and these all factors will definitely pose a, 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 a risk of uh, say cardiovascular uh, complication atherosclerosis and cardiovascular complication right so such a case reduction in bad cholesterol what you call as a ldl low density lipoprotein vldl very low density lipoprotein will also help a lot right and finally uh, metformin can also you can say that cause loss of appetite this loss of appetite also will be helpful in managing or reducing the weight of the patient and in that case definitely in obesity it will be additionally you can say that an advantage that you can consider and that is the reason why i told you that as per the american diabetic association these are currently right if patient is not able to manage their sugar level uh, uh, on you can say that uh, diet and exercise alone then definitely this as a single therapy also are having a very good effect and definitely if the blood sugar is still not controlled combination therapy definitely they can be used with many other drugs okay so let's revise the mechanism of action two major mechanism one definitely increase in the peripheral utilization and second which is more important most important that is reduction in the hepatic glucose output okay uh, some book also suggests that this drug can reduce the uh, 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 you can say glucose absorption also right but then uh, it is not a very important action uh, uh, as far as the clinical action of bicarbonate is considered right we will discuss maybe drugs which are acting on this pathway that is alpha glucosidase inhibitors in next or maybe upcoming lecture right but then bicarbonates do not have a significant effect on the glucose absorption yes bicarbonate does have uh, antagonizing action on glucagon which you can con consider as an important pharmacological action but still as per me the reduction in uh, uh, you can say hepatic glucose output 
that is by inhibiting the gluconeogenesis that is the most important uh, 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 clinical action that you need to consider fine so now let us move towards the pharmacokinetics of your uh, uh, this bicarbonate drug so these are well absorbed orally so no issue regarding the absorption even they are not bound to plasma protein so drug interaction related to the plasma protein displacement also will not be a possible case and the clinically important drug interaction right chances of producing such type of drug interaction also will be less so pharmacokinetic is quite smooth even there is no metabolism of metformin that means it is excreted unchanged in the urine this also is a very typical one that you can consider and if you are saying that it is not metabolized if it is excreted unchanged in the urine that does mean that if patient is having some renal insufficiency right maybe a kidney related problem then definitely they are contraindicated because they are not metabolized they are directly excreted in the urine that is the reason why you can just see that tf is also comparatively is less right approximately metformin is having a biological half life of 3 years moving toward the adverse effect definitely these drugs are comparatively safe but yes initial therapy with the initial therapy those related gi effects can be observed that is anorexia loss of appetite as i told you there's an advantage actually diarrhea nausea feel metallic taste right tiredness this all you can say are possible case but then eventually with the continuation therapy this will uh, uh, disappear but major problem is this right that is lactic acidosis right which definitely is very rare with met metformin but yes very common with fenformin and also with bufotenin okay so this is rare but potentially fatal effect rare in the sense when wherever there is an accumulation of you can say that metformin in the body in the case where there is a kidney related problem or maybe say for example if concurrent alcohol consumption is been there or maybe say for example some situation uh, uh, which increases burden on the heart or maybe which promotes the anaerobic metabolism there you can say that uh, like just say for example congestive cardiac failure there the chances of lactic acidosis are very high right now you must be thinking that why metformin produces lactic acidosis or why bicarbonate produces lactic acidosis so definitely the answer is in the you can say that your uh, anatomy of your skeletal muscle right if you know that the muscles and rbcs these are the one right which are example where anaerobic metabolism uh, that is the atp production uh, 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 by anaerobic mechanism in our body does exist okay so we are not going to discuss rbcs but then definitely skeletal muscle right where there are two possibilities if uh, uh, you are you are doing a routine work definitely aerobic metabolism does good but then wherever there is an excess of you can say work right for skeletal muscle then uh, in availability unavailability of you can say oxygen they may shift their metabolism to the anaerobic pathways in such a case glycolytic pathway will be prevalent and that case it will lead to production of lactic acids lactic acid right now this normally this lactic acid with an energy dependent mechanism will be taken to the liver where it will be again converted to glucose right and finally the stored glucose may be in a form of glycogen will be again sent to the liver where it gets converted to glucose and then further it will can be utilized to form the lactic acid right this is the mechanism by which you can say you get very easily fatigue right say for example if you are going for a mountain trekking maybe for next few days you may be or maybe next few hours right uh, you will feel fatigueness fatigueness is because of the accumulation of lactic acid and that is the reason why what you do is you go for a maybe say for example uh, 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 therapy with ice bag or maybe say for example warm water to increase the blood circulation in the you can say that uh, skeletal muscle once there is an increased or improved uh, blood circulation is there this lactic acid can promptly be sent to the liver where it could be converted to the glucose this is what normally happens now your drug that is metformin that disturbs this cycle that is the uh, uh, conversion of lactic acid into glucose right that is what you call as a gluconeogenesis this is definitely by inhibition of you can say mitochondrial etc right that is how it is get disturbed and eventually the level of lactic acid in the blood will increase and that will lead to the problem right what you call as a lactic acidosis means process right process by which lactic acid level in the blood will get increased that is called as a 
electric abuse. So these are some of the reasons which can lead to UCOS or which could contribute to the lactic acidosis, right? And definitely metformin, if used along with any of these you can say comorbid conditions, maybe congestive cardiac failure or in case of renal insufficiency, accumulation of metformin does have a risk of you can say that uh, lactic acidosis. Okay, and that, that is what I have tried to explain. Right? Long term use also may interfere with the absorption of vitamin B12. Right. So, vitamin B12 deficiency, as such, you know that vegetarians they have very few sources, right, uh, uh, in the diet, right, which could uh, say help you to achieve your uh, normal vitamin B12 level. And if you use some drugs like this metformin for long term, then definitely further vitamin B12 related deficiencies could be prevented. Okay. Contraindications, as I told you, renal or hepatic disease, or maybe hypoxic pulmonary disease, right, definitely. Why these are contraindications? because there is a chance of lactic acidosis fine so maybe in hypoxic condition you can consider that muscles will now be shifting more towards the anaerobic metabolism in such a case the chances of lactic acidosis will be higher right this is how you need to understand fine so that's all you can say the details related to the you can say that uh, metformin or maybe bicarbonate drugs therapeutic use as i already discussed in type 2 diabetes mellitus especially those who are obese and who fail to uh, manage their hyperglycemia with diet alone, right? As it is not able to produce hypoglycemia, it can safely be combined with sulfonylureas, glitazones, insulin, maybe GLP-1 analog, everything that you can consider here, right? And uh, yeah, this is a very important, right? These are some of the other potential. Apart from the diabetes, it can be used in treatment of polycystic ovarian syndrome, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and premature puberty. Now you need to find out that why this metformin is we are able to use in such because of that uh, variety of disorders. What is the reason why we are using uh, as a therapeutic molecule in such type of an abnormal use. Okay. Regarding PCOS, I would like to stress more that if it is a PCOS in diabetic patient and non-diabetic patient is metformin uh, you can say helpful in both cases or not right that is what you need to find out additionally right so you cannot expect my video lecture without any assignment or a question right so definitely you will try to uh, uh, have some exercise with your brain also fine i hope hopefully i will get answer in my comment box Chal. uh one more question that i would like to ask regarding you can say that uh, this drug is does this drug, your buformin or metformin, have any possible role in the prevention or treatment of COVID-19, right, which is right now a pandemic situation? If yes, then, or maybe if it is no, also, then you have to justify your answer with reason. Fine. So, this additionally, you will also will find out and you will put your answers in the comment box. Fine. So, thank you very much. That's all for today's lecture. Very small and sweet lecture right hopefully you have understood right and two important things that we have remember one is by this disturbance of the mitochondrial etc uh, it does activate the ampk pathway and by that it is producing this reduction in the uh, gluconeogenesis and second more most important thing what we have learned is how it produces lactic acidosis that also we have learned okay so with this i am completing my today's lecture uh, hope you have I enjoyed uh, so that this lecture. If there is any doubt, definitely again you can put in the comment box. Thank you very much.